The Significance of Dry Fasting First Lesson, Matthew chapter 16 verse 21 From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Second Lesson, John chapter 2 verses 17 to 19 and his disciples remembered, it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign shewest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Golden Text, Matthew chapter 12 verse 40. For, as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Be born again. The three texts above deal on the issue of the three days dry fasting, observed in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. Now, how many people in the world have participated in the three days dry fasting periods done in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star? Very many people are asking why a whole of 72 hours should be spent on fasting. A lot of people pray that dry fasting should not be observed often. Others even wish it should be stopped forthwith. Some would fast for the first 24 hours, and complain, they are human beings and for that reason, they stop. Some would fast for two days and nights, while a few endure to the end. As recorded in Matthew chapter 12 verse 40, our Lord Jesus Christ promised to remain in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. This is why members of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star observe the three days dry fasting. For these three days and nights, no water is drunk, no food is tasted, bathing and brushing of teeth are not also allowed. Is this not three days and nights death? Whoever undergoes this fasting has died and resurrected with Christ. This is what is called, born again, for he or she has become a new being after the fasting. This is what is keeping us alive and strong. You would recall, God directed Abraham to take his son Isaac and sacrifice him. Abraham and Isaac were to make a journey of 72 hours, 3 days and nights, which is the same thing we are doing here in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. Isaac was an earthly example, which was presented as an illustration of an impending heavenly event. The directive given to Abraham by God was a practical demonstration of the death of Christ and his subsequent stay in the grave for 3 days and 3 nights. This episode is linked with Abraham because of the promise, which God made with him, that a root shall spring from Abraham. In this promise, God did not say, Abraham's children but one son. That very son who shall come from Abraham, as promised by God was Christ. Now, the problem of the entire world is patience. God is the father of patience. He is patient and wants us to exercise patience. He can make a promise today, which would take thousands of years to consummate. And for this reason, whoever is devoid of this virtue would become hopeless after the first 1,000 years. However, whether you believe or not, at the expected time, the promise must come to fulfillment. God does his things the way he likes. It is on this ground our Lord Jesus the Christ said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law, or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Matthew chapter 5 verses 17 and 18. The Holy Bible is referred to, as the covenant book of God, because, all what God did, what he is doing, and what he shall, are written therein. When you say, this or that thing had been taken away, where do you think such a thing is taken to? God is the father of truth, and all his words are true. Once he makes a pronouncement, he stands by it. A great many of you become doubtful, when things go the way you did not expect. Consider the case of Isaac. He was the only son of Abraham, but God directed that Isaac should be used as a sacrificial lamb. Abraham accepted, and though he had to trek for three days and three nights, 72 hours, he did not change his mind. When he got to the destination, he still set a fire on the altar to burn Isaac. This was, when Isaac asked his father Abraham saying, Father, the fire is burning, where is the sacrificial lamb? Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. God is the one who sends one on an errand, and goes with the one to fulfill the purpose thereof. Since he is the sender and doer of the job, all glories and thanks belong to him. This is, why it is said, Cut down the bush, and I would set fire into it with my power. God controls destiny. 
God has never deceived and will never deceive. What he did to the Israelites would be done to the Gentiles. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. Why then do you doubt him, and why do you murmur against him? You have no choice other than to do whatever he directs you to do. If God asks you to jump into burning flames, you have to comply without delay. If he directs you to dive into the grave, you have to do the same. This is, because in all events, and situations, God had given answers already. What has placed a lot of you in suffering, and adverse conditions, is lack of faith. Many people, when they are sent on an errand by God, faithlessly doubt their safety during such missions. Why do you doubt God? Have you ever seen a person whom God sent on an errand, without escorting him to get the job accomplished? The will of the Most High God is supreme. He had willed various purposes for all his creation. No one can change God's will, no matter how he fasts, prays, preaches, or weeps. He cannot change the will which he had destined for someone. This explains why it is said, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Matthew chapter 6 verse 34. It is only God who can call one to himself, for no one is capable of pleasing God. If he does not elect you, you cannot be his friend. Even the faith which Abraham had, was not his, but it was freely given by God. I want you to know, God is a hydra-headed being. He is the right, left, front, back and he is everything. He is a child, adult, women, as well as men. If Moses had this knowledge, he would not have whipped God the way he did, as recorded in Numbers chapter 20 verses 11 and 12. You may recall, when Moses was abused by the Israelites, for taking them away from Egypt to suffer in the wilderness, only, because they were thirsty, and God became a big rock. Moses was directed to point his staff at the rock and speak, for water would come out enough for all the people, and their beasts. Since Moses was always easily exasperated, he took offense on the abuses and curses heaped on him by the Israelites, and smote the rock twice. For that reason, God was not pleased with him, because he did not glorify God in the presence of the people. He was therefore, not allowed to enter into the promised land. Numbers chapter 20 verses 1 to 20. Moses did not know, both the rock and the water, that gushed out of it, were God in disguise. So, you can't see how incomprehensible the Almighty God is. No one knows him. And like the case of Moses, when Abraham had set Isaac ready for the sacrifice, God ordered him not to take the boy's life. He was shown a ram by the side, which was used for the sacrifice. Genesis chapter 22 verses 10 to 13. After the sacrifice, Abraham and Isaac went home in flying colors. That is the significance of the death of Christ. When he told the Jews to destroy the temple, and he would rebuild it in three days, the people doubted the possibility of his action and thus, became annoyed. However, Christ knew the implication of his statement. And so when his disciples advised him not to go to Jerusalem, he insisted and went. If Jesus the Christ had ran away, what would have become of this world? And if Christ had truly ran away, could he have escaped the death, which was written for him? People refuse to do what God directs because of fear. They prefer to stay in the world, yet, they neither die, nor live a successful life. They cannot even have peace, as a result of their failure to endure the ways of God. And now, one can understand from the statements made by our Lord Jesus Christ, as recorded in the texts for this sermon, death does not actually exist, but what happened was a demonstration of the power of God. This was done so that his glory would be revealed. God is the one controlling one's destiny. Some children, for instance, even at their tender ages, proclaim they want to work for God. Do you think they are the ones making the statement? This was written for them, before they were born into the physical earth plane. Unfortunately, when the time for this assignment to manifest comes, they then resist. This however, cannot help the situation, because what has been destined cannot be erased. Whatsoever happens to one comes from the Father, and had been written against that person, before he was born. There is nothing that can change or stop it from taking place. It may be recalled, on the night of the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he said, If it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless not, as I will, but as thou wilt. Matthew chapter 26 verse 39. Did God grant his request on that very case? 
Though he prayed and rolled on the ground, until his sweat became blood, the cup was not taken away. Luke chapter 22 verse 4.